Are you a new mama and you're in your second or third trimester and you're avidly getting your nursery ready? Hit pause for a second and listen to this episode um, about taking time to think about how you're going to care for yourself in those first couple weeks after baby arrives. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a bird certified pediatrician and mom myself. Today's episode is really near and dear to my heart. I want to talk all about new mommy self-care. So I feel like we throw this term around a lot, but what are some of the things that I recommend for moms um, to have ahead of time to set themselves up for having good self-care in the postpartum period? So typically care here at Be Kind Pediatrics starts in the third trimester. Um, and one of those appointments really focuses on empowering moms to think about the postpartum period and what they can do to set themselves up to take good care of themselves because good care of yourself as a, as a mom and a father um, is one of the most important parts of your newborn's health. Um, having a healthy and happy caregiver is, again, one of the most important predictors of good health for a newborn. I want to first start by talking about support. I think it's the most important and crucial aspect of postpartum self-care. So think about having a trusted family member or friend around, especially in the first week, to help you out, either specifically a couple mornings to help feed baby or to help you out around the house, to help you get around, to make sure that you have water and food. Don't be scared to lean on friends for healthy, nutritious meals in that first week. But if you can um, and you have it available, definitely think about building a community around you. Again, that might include a trusted family member or a friend. If you are financially able, it might include a postpartum doula or baby nurse to help you feel confident in caring for your baby and breastfeeding if you're choosing to do that. Two, I really recommend that you have a discussion with your partner ahead of time. Talk to your partner about a loose plan. You're not going to have a very strict schedule with your newborn, especially in those first couple of weeks. But have a loose plan for who's going to do what. Think about how you're going to break up overnight feeds, for example. Is one of you going to feed in the early beginning part of the night and go to bed late and wake up late? Is one of you going to go to the late night feeds, so you're going to go to bed early and wake up early? Are you going to do every other night, every other two, every other two nights? Just have a general plan for how you are both going to handle overnight feed and baby care in a way that you can both get um, some sleep. Two, think about dividing up things like food, laundry, house chores. Um, if you have a pet who's going to lock them and feed them, uh, or if you're going to get extra support like we just talked about to offload some of those tasks for yourselves. And I want to have a special little talk here for mommies who plan to breastfeed. So if you're planning to breastfeed and you're breastfeeding at the chest, really think about how to get your partner involved in some of the other care. So whether you're going to feed um, and your partner is going to swaddle and put them down and do the soothing, I do encourage um, that you pump and give a bottle, you know, especially after your breast milk is established, because I think it's a really nice part for both partners and both caregivers to be able to engage in feeding their baby. And think a little bit about how you're going to split up again some of those night feeds if you're planning to breastfeed at the chest. Three, empower yourself with knowledge. Knowledge is power and it helps you to be able to guide yourself and what you can expect for yourself in those first weeks. So again, I really highly recommend a third trimester visit with your pediatrician, especially if you are a new parent, to get a good idea of what's normal, what you can expect, great books and resources that are trusted by your pediatrician on preparing yourself for a newborn, some few recommendations that I usually have right off the bat is I really like the happiest baby on the block, one, two, three magic. Those are great places to start. A lot of my patients really like moms on call. Just get a good bunch of resources from your pediatrician. And if you have time, um, get a good understanding of what you can expect for newborn hygiene, feeding, cleaning, diapering, um, bottle or breastfeeding, formula feeding, etc. Four, I really recommend that mommies plan at least one or two 
um, visits to a postpartum support group. We have a great one here in Westfields, um, which is where we're located, but there are very popular now and there are great options out there. So it, plan on at least attending one to two sessions of a postpartum support group. Five, I really like to encourage moms, especially breastfeeding moms, to think about a postpartum massage. So it's a bonus for breastfeeding moms because postpartum massages have some research that supports that they increase your milk production. But even if you're not breastfeeding, you just went through a marathon of delivering a baby, whether you had a vaginal delivery or a C-section and got cut open and had a major surgery. I think having a postpartum massage planned ahead of time is a really great way to engage in self-care and make sure that you're cutting and putting apart a little bit of time for yourself in those first couple weeks. This is kind of a big one, but a lot of parents focus on setting up the newborn nursery and all the spaces for baby and they forget about themselves. So again, if you're a new mom and you're gonna be the primary caretaker at home for the first couple months with your baby, thinking about setting up a space for yourself. Um, that's separate from baby. So having a part of your house with good light, um, maybe a cozy chair, some hobbies like a book, knitting, journaling, you know, um, journaling, reading a book and knitting of all are all evidence-based ways, by the way, of engaging in mindfulness and our proven strategies to help reduce postpartum depression, uh, depression, anxiety, having some water, a candle or diffuser, if you like those. Um, and that's quiet, <laughs> quiet and cozy are the keys here, but I really encourage parents to not just think about newborn nursery, but also a separate space for yourself plan to get out of the house. So you will be able to walk, um, Day one, usually after having your baby, your OB will clear you at least for gentle walking. By the time you go home, you should plan to walk small amounts, at least get out of the house if it's nice weather. Um, as you start to recover and your body recovers, thinking about going for a walk to get coffee, a walk in the park, maybe making it part of your routine. So a bonus tip here is babies really do well with exposure at dusk. Um, that natural dusk light exposure helps them with their light entrainment and helps them from doing something called reverse cycling where they get their days and nights confused. So that can be a really nice time for both you and baby to get outside, for you to get some exercise and quiet, for your baby to get some nice, um, again, light stimulation, but also developmental stimulation, hearing birds, feeling the breeze. Also, <laughs> try to think about a plan ahead of time for food. Think about having whole foods and snacks that you like in the fridge or in the pantry ahead of time. Think about maybe preparing some water for yourself with lemon, cucumber, mint, something that's soothing and really just for you. And try to think about your sleep. The newborn period is so challenging for parents in that they don't get enough sleep often. So if you can, if you have a trusted, again, family member or friend around, asking them, especially in those first two weeks, if they can take one or two mornings where they plan to be at your house that you can plan to sleep in. And last, but certainly not least, plan to be graceful with yourself. It is okay if you didn't have a delicious home-cooked meal um, and you had to order in. You are going to likely feel overwhelmed, and that's okay as long as you have plans in place and people you can reach out to for help and support. Prepare ahead of time that some things are not going to go exactly the way that you want them to maybe um, and that you have to be okay with that and focus on the good things. Take one thing at a time. If having a baby, especially a newborn, is really, really hard um, and it's okay to feel like it's hard, um, it's okay to feel sad or angry or that you forgot things, be realistic with yourself. You're going to be doing lots of things for the first time if this is your first baby that are new. Um, so try to not have too much planned ahead of time, like social gatherings or major life events. If you can try to avoid things like moving, renovating additional, um, um, stressors that might be disruptive to your typical, um, schedule. So this is a topic again, that's super near and dear to my heart. I hope that you liked it. If you liked it, please feel free to give us a like or subscribe. If you have other helpful tips for mamas that you wished you had planned or thought about ahead of time for the postpartum period for yourself, please leave those below. If you have any questions or comments, also please leave those below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. 
For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.